What it is, what it is, people of YouTube, and welcome back to another video on your girlfriend's worst nightmare. Yes, sir, we back, people, with another part, and we got some two legends, my brother Matt Cornelius and my other brother Cam fucking Coley. What do you guys think about the pod? But you know, I think Joe Rogan's got some competition. I thought the pod was pretty good. I think we had some valuable stuff to say. And yeah. Yeah, I think some people can take a lot from it. Like, subscribe, okay. and follow me on LinkedIn. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode on your girlfriend's worst nightmare. You know, um, it's a privilege and honor to be with uh, some legends today. This is the man that actually stole my best friend. <laughs> this is, you know, my other man here, Cam Coley, ladies and gentlemen, and Matt Cornelius. Welcome to your girlfriend's worst nightmare. Oh, thanks for having yeah. me. Ladies and gentlemen, so guys, how are you guys doing today? How was, uh, you know, your journey? Why are you in Cape Town, Cam? And uh, yeah, like, dude, this is not for you. This place is definitely <laughs> not for you. <laughs> um, Cape Town's a different place. Eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Some yeah, people yeah. here, jeez, I think first day I was here, driving on the street, I saw a fight. People were like, <laughs> yeah, some guy got knocked out. Jeez, um, crazy, man. But yeah, I'm down in Cape Town, yeah, staying yeah. with Matt, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and seeing you, obviously, yeah, and yeah, seeing yeah, other yeah. boys from school. Yeah, yeah, shout out, shout out, shout um, out. But yeah, mainly here for business, yeah. um, which I think we'll get into a bit later. So I won't 100%. get into too much yeah, yeah, now, 100%, 100%. but yeah, hopefully uh, <coughs> we're here, hopefully have some meetings. Um, we're meeting with some people, so mm -hmm. yeah. We'll 100%, and obviously, you know, you've you brought one of your absolute legends, um, Matt Cornelius. What an absolute legend. Met him. Yeah, uh, what two days ago? Yeah, like, two days ago. This guy looks like he's gonna be on Forbes, man. <laughs> 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 man, how are you doing today, brother? I'm um, good, thanks, bro. Very yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First time on the pod, I heard. You know, first time on the pod. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and thanks feeling, for having feeling, me. Yeah, and no, 100 percent, man. We should have a lovely conversation today. And I think you know, for those who don't know, these uh, these legends today are, are coming to speak to us about business, about the life, and about how to escape the matrix, <laughs> which we all uh, yeah, <laughs> controversially trying to escape, man. But I think the best place to start, you know, with all sorts surroundings and with all people is always the beginning and uh, you know Matt I just wanted to ask just out of interest kind of what is the best way or the best kind of life experience in the beginning days that uh, you've gone through that makes you the person that you are today that's a big question yeah, yeah always um, man that's what so they I do was, yeah. I was brought up in a small town in KZN <laughs> Hilton. oh you're brought up in yeah, Hilton what a legend Hilton. what a legend what a legend, um, what a legend. you know very very chilled up yeah, yeah 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 um can't complain at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, one experience that I could think of in particular was um, actually bought a PSP from someone. Okay. Um, just, you know, when you're 12 years old, you kind of want a PSP. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You bought a PSP. Where did yeah. you get that cash from? Um, pocket money, you know, I saved oh, up. Oh, crazy. Whatever, whatever. Look, it started from an early age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, I sold that PSP, like, when I was done using it, like a year later. I got yeah. it, like you do. And... Um, I sold it for quite a big profit, mm -hmm. and I was like, wow, this is actually, I was 12 years old putting my PSP on Gumtree, and Jeez. I made 500 bucks selling it. Jeez, so okay. I was like, that just really like got me thinking, you know, anything's possible, you, mm -hmm. can, like, you can do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Small, stupid experience, but um, it opened up my mind to oh. what is possible. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> Matt Damn. is a wheeler dealer. This guy, <laughs> yeah, he yeah, can yeah. find <laughs> ways. <laughs> yes, man, crazy, man. And for you, Cam, um, obviously, we, we obviously you know, for those who don't know, um, we had a Rick Neng. And he was on the famous, the, the one podcast actually that went viral, basically. Um, Days Gone Old. What an episode that was. Um, mm. But you can, what, what did you say to people that don't know who you are? How would we introduce you? So I come from a small farming town called Ishawi or Eshowe, if yeah. you want to say it properly. Yeah. Um, spoke Zulu from when I was tiny. Mm. Um, really came from the farm, came from rural setting. Um, and then went to boarding school and whatever, but we'll get into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but one experience that I was thinking of earlier, which I thought was quite funny, was I think I was about maybe eight or mm, seven or eight years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had a friend at school who I wasn't really close with him, but whatever. And when I got dropped off at school, my mom saw his mom yeah. at school. And my mom actually invited this guy to come and play with me at my house for the afternoon. That is absolutely crazy. And I was like, I said to my mom when I got home, she's like, yeah. This guy, I'm <laughs> yeah, I don't want to mention okay. him, but like this guy is going to come and play with you this afternoon at home. And mm. I was like, what? Yeah. I, d I didn't invite him. Yeah. You invited him. You play with him. <laughs> <laughs> and I think what that shows is like, I don't enjoy doing things I don't enjoy doing. Mm. Uh, I want to find things that I enjoy doing and I'll stick with those things. Mm. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, shout story. out to you guys, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that difference was obviously uh, an awakening part to both of you. And I think that's a, it's a beautiful thing. And it's, it's a lovely thing to know that, you know, from a very early age, you guys were rebels, to say <laughs> the least. <you> know? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I guess in that, though, there is some sort of um, 
with difference comes misunderstanding, you know. And I think for me, uh, growing up, I was always a person that was very social and I jumped from squad to squad. And people didn't understand why I did that. And that was because I only found certain people that I related to as opposed to the entire group, you know. And I think I was very misunderstood in that way because, like, hyper course, dude, one minute you're with us, the next minute you're with the weird guys, the next minute you're with those guys. Like, what's going on? And I, just, I suppose for me, it was just the fact that I found certain individuals and certain characteristics that I love, but there was not a single group that covered every single characteristic. So, you know, kind of looking at you guys, what do you think was something that was misunderstood about you, Cam? I think when I was younger, I was very... I was quite a quiet and nervous kid. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think that was me being quiet and nervous in myself, like yeah. being insecure in myself. I think it was more just not needing to talk and not needing to make a lot of noise or in class, like I just sit quietly. Mm. And I think I was misunderstood from a young age of being someone who was maybe more like shy and nervous than they were. Yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. know. Yeah. I felt like I wasn't at the time. Maybe I was. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But um I think that was something like, I think I was always a bit more sure in myself than people thought, mm -hmm. especially adults. Yeah. I always felt like I was, like I didn't see the difference even when I was like nine, 10. I was like, these adults here, and I think it's something we've spoken about before. It's mm. like, like what do adults, why are they, why can they do things that I'm not allowed to do? Why Sheesh. can't I have a credit card? You know, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. So yeah, I think yeah, that yeah. was something that, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. I don't know if that answers the Yeah, question. no, fair, fair, yeah. fair, fair, fair. And yourself, man, what were, you, what were some of those mm. experiences? I think listening to you, I think it was, quite similar to your story yeah. is I always seem to see different sides of people. Mm. So whereas, whereas one person was rejected, let's say rejected at school, mm. you know, like just did, did their own thing, yeah. wasn't really worried about fitting in. Yeah. I would always want to find out about that person, mm -hmm. you know, and get to know them. Yeah, and people yeah. were confused about that. They didn't realize why I was doing mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's just, just what I wanted to do. Yeah, know, yeah, hundred percent. Story, hundred percent. Sure. You yeah. remind me of uh, Blade and Hardy. Remember the days of Blade <laughs> and Hardy? So Blade and Hardy, for those who don't know, was uh, was a guy just like as you're saying. Nobody really liked him, but I was <laughs> the only guy that liked him, you know, because yeah. of that difference. Yeah. So why do you think you had that? Like, what was the fascination about? Knowing people Yo, that were very I don't different. know. Maybe it was because myself. Sometimes yeah. I felt that people didn't understand me. Mm. And when I chatted to someone about it, it just made me feel good. Yeah. Like someone was actually listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. I just think lots of people uh, want to be listened to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. Um, that's just come through, through throughout the years. Sheesh, man. Now that's yeah. insane, man. And when you were growing up, what did you kind of, you know, think you were going to be ever since the PSP day? <laughs> Yo, um, you were like, okay, fuck, I can sell it now for five million. <laughs> <laughs> I guess um, I never really had a, a fixed idea. Yeah, I was yeah. quite keen on game ranging. Oh, game when ranging? I was, when I was young, bro. Ah, very ah, there's push. no money there, man. <laughs> game ranging. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're not thinking about money at that age. Bro. Come on, come yeah, on. Fair, fair, fair. Um, I always enjoyed being outside, yeah, you know, yeah, doing yeah. that sort of thing. Animals yeah. interested me. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But I just, I guess I just wanted to be, just enjoy my life. Mm, mm, I didn't, mm. didn't really worry about exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, just yeah. knew I wanted to be doing something I wanted to do. She's crazy, man. Um, which is hard to find. Fair, 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 yeah. fair, 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 mm. fair, 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 fair. I hear that. And yourself, Cam, were you, yeah, you probably the game ranger vibes. Yeah, right? <laughs> I was going to say, man, when I was like, I don't know, up until I was like 10, it mm. was like game ranger. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And then I got to high school and it became a bit more about the money. Yeah. So it was more like, how do I... People always, yeah, this is something I think we'll chat about, mm. but people always try to link their passion to how they make money, okay. especially at a young age. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. for me, it was like, okay, I'm passionate. I was really passionate about animals, mm. birds, wildlife, and how do I link that with money? Mm. And the best way for me to do that was by becoming a vet. Mm. So I think from the age of about 14, high school vibes, mm. I think it became more about being a vet. But from a younger, a younger age, it was definitely game ranger or like live in the bush type thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, 100%. Very much so on brand. And you even got a falcon. Did you see yeah. that? <laughs> like yeah. that's how much you invested in that. Do you, are you still, are you interested in like falconry and stuff like that or not really? Uh, I've I've been involved with Cam and his falcons mm. quite a lot. Oh, so you weird trips. like that. Okay, yeah. that's crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, I, mean, I, I enjoy watching it, but I don't think I can commit to looking after. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. For so long. Jeez, bro. man, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. What about yourself, bro? No, I don't know. Like I, yeah, I, yeah growing up was a, growing up was a tough thing for me you know because i think that the, the, the biggest problem that i had was that 
like as I said, like I was so interested in different like groups, you know, and so like it was very difficult for me to find like a specific thing that I, yeah, wanted to be. Because this one day, oh, I just want to be a model. This one day, I want to be a Formula One driver. This next day, I want to be a, a work <laughs> in the army, you know. Like I just feel like for me, like it was just every single day was different, and yeah, I didn't really have like a. I wish I kind of had like a set goal mm -hmm. at a very early age. Cause like right now I'm just it's I'm literally in the same position like I was at five years old when mm. I was five years old. So I just feel like yeah, I just really don't know what I'm gonna do with my life. But yeah, anyways, I mean this podcast is not a bad start. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I'm, sorry, yeah. I, I think what people also get wrong, wrong mm -hmm. in that sense is that especially from a young age, people teach you that when you choose something, you have to go down that yeah. and you're in it for the long 100%, 100%, run. It's not like that. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Like, uh, for someone like you. Y to be able to be a model, okay, maybe not a model. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Corpse can definitely be a model. Please, can you, please, can you just, uh, we're going to put a poll down below. Corpse, we're going to go to Vogue. You know the vibes. Yes, sir. <laughs> but yeah, all of those things, you can do all of those things. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. about finding time, finding a means firstly, which is, I think, where we're at, mm. and then finding the methods to do all of those different things that yeah. you want to do. You don't have to be specific and yeah. choose the one or two things. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hear you. I hear you. So obviously now, there's obviously has been a, like a, a shift now through your personality over the years to kind of acquire this type of mindset Matt, what do you think that's been for you you know like how has your personality kind of changed to this money mindset and how yeah, has it shifted yeah how has it shifted over the years I guess up until I, I left high school right yeah, yeah, yeah I had no idea how money worked like yeah. how to make money obviously I knew I wanted to make money yeah, yeah, yeah. and I knew that like you know you can buy and sell something and yeah. you can make money from yeah, it yeah 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 100% um but ever since, uh, it's just like I've I've looked into my into what I want to do mm. and into what I want out of my life, and the the number one thing is being free, yeah. like being you know having freedom, mm -hmm. being able to say next week, um, let's head out to the Bahamas for a week Sheesh. and let's enjoy, sure. you know, or like you know something small like oh it's my dad's birthday next week I want to just go back home and be there with them. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to have to be at work nine to five. Oh, I have to take leave for this birthday now. Is it really worth it? Like, Sheesh. I want to be able to have my priorities straight, mm. and I don't want being. I don't want to be stuck at a job to be one of my highest priorities. Mm. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I guess that's where it all came from. Mm. Just from the the want to be be free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that yeah. wasn't like started by anything. Like, where did that belief mm. of being free come from? Yeah, where do you think you know, that yeah. uh, like it became about being free? Because yeah. I think. Because, like, I mean, yeah. the honestly, the corporate life to an aspiring business person, whatever is you want to say that, is attractive, you know, to them. Um, but, like, you know, for you, I think you kind of get to that, like, mindset when you've kind of been, like, 20 years yeah. into the corporate yeah, life. Yeah, no, I just... <laughs> you know? I just um, Becoming a corporate dog. Yeah, I want to yeah. do my own thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, I want to do what makes me happy. Mm, 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 and um, I don't want to be tied down by, by someone else. I don't know where that belief came from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where that sort of desire to do my own thing came from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it's just been since I was small, like I just don't like people telling me what to do. Jeez, yeah, I hear that. And um, yeah. I'd rather just be able to do my own thing. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. Like why, why you've got one life, mm. Jack, live it to your fullest. Sheesh. Um, mm. Jack, just do whatever you want to do. 100%. And to, 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 to get to that stage, you have to, you have to work, you know. Mm. Um, so be working now, bro. Amen, yeah. amen <laughs> to that, man. So count for you then. <laughs> what do you think? How has your kind of your personality shifted over the years? as you've kind of yeah, matured into this new man? I think, especially when I was young, yeah. I was very quiet and very introverted, yeah. very, I mean, you remember me in grade yeah, eight, yeah. very quiet guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't like talking very much. And I think over the years, especially high school, was yeah. a big, big transition point yeah, to me. Yeah, because which we definitely going to get into, yeah. And <laughs> I think uh, exchange, which I think we'll get into, yeah, yeah. was probably the biggest ex mm. uh, like point in change where I, over there, I wasn't enforced by the beliefs that people had about me. Yeah. I could just go there. No one had any preconceived ideas. Mm. I could just go there and be who I wanted, who I was, and I guess who I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. um, and that was quite eye-opening. But I think definitely the change from, I mean, I'm still an introvert by heart. I still love being by myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've gotten more extroverted and being around people. I think that's probably been the biggest character shift within myself mm. is that going from, like when I was young, talking to people scared me. I didn't like, you know... I, I mean, this is contradictory <laughs> to what I was saying earlier. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's been the biggest change. Is yeah. that I, ha I have to be extroverted mm. to do a lot of the things and to achieve certain things. So it's just something I've had to 
had to teach myself. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. No, I love that, man. Yo, I, I can share the sentiment with both of you guys. You know, I think that in many ways I, I yeah, I'm also kind of the same, you know. <laughs> yeah, because I've, I, as much as people don't believe it, but I, I was introverted, so, like, I then transitioned into this extroversion phase as a way of, like, challenging myself, you know. Kind of like the whole uh, idea of David Goggins being comfortable while being uncomfortable. Mm. And so, like, I was being uncomfortable by being social. Mm. And then eventually I just transitioned into being a social life. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, I guess we then got to high school, which is obviously a very interesting period in both of you guys' lives. You were a college guy, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, like college. Oh, like like <laughs> 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 and did you guys meet, you guys met in high school or mm. it was later than No, that? we met quite a while. Last year. Yeah, school. last year. Eh? Okay. Yeah. So how was your college experience? Because I mean, we don't know college. Um, yeah. Why didn't you come to the black and white? And um, what the fuck is your problem? <laughs> <laughs> I actually only applied to Marysburg College. Oh, listen to this guy. Oh. Uh, I don't even waste my time with him. Would have been my second option. Yeah. <laughs> you need to worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah bro. I just, uh, I don't know. I don't know exactly why I went to college. Yeah. I just know that it was a good school. A lot of the guys from my junior school were going there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I looked at St. Charles, and that just wasn't an option. Yeah, yeah. St. Uh, Charles, by the way, is another boarding school. Uh, yes, yeah. Pretty buck, but yeah, it's <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. you went to Ladsworth. Yeah, I went to Ladsworth for junior school, which oh, okay, is a small okay. school in Hilton. Yes, yes, yes. I know Ladsworth. Um, yeah, I know Ladsworth. Sure yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. And then, yeah, college I just uh, just seemed like the right thing to do. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And kind of going through that whole phase of college, was it, was mm. were you like on the social life? It's big, it's big. Yeah, it's a huge know? school. Like, there's uh, a thousand boys. College is yeah? a huge Two school. Thousand. Two yeah, it's 1,200 yeah. around about. Yes. That's probably a bit more these days. <laughs> Yo, that's um, but it's, it's hard to adjust to, yeah? When you mm. come from a school when there's uh, like 60 oaks in your grade mm. and then you come to this place and there's these huge matrix jeez, walking around. Jeez, you know? jeez, jeez. Huge, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you just realize that they're yeah. just normal guys yeah, by the time yeah, you're yeah, in the yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, it's, it's quite a lot to get used to. Um, but, you know, you, you go through it with all the boys. Mm. Uh, you come out at the other end with brothers. No, so 100%. Yeah, it's worth it. 100%, man. Oh, yeah. Shout out to that. I mean, Cam, yeah, then do you, you have a, Do you have a, like one experience that was like really sick that you uh, can remember or mm. anything? One particular experience. Mm. Even though, like for us, it would probably be, <laughs> I don't know, I mean, whatever. In grade eight, our whole dorm, there was probably like eight, 17 of us. Corpse had a leg brace at the time. <laughs> and we went, on a, we went on a night run around the school. And oh, anyway, we went and swam in all the fountains yeah, and yeah, headmaster's yeah. pool. And <laughs> that was funny. And yeah, then we nearly yeah. got caught, but Corpse with his leg brace. <laughs> <You know. laughs> what a legend, what a legend. But yeah, anyways. Oh, yeah, I think um, in matric, what we do is we all, we all get together and we all run around the school. Mm -hmm. And we go to each individual uh, quad, mm. so d different grades, quads, and okay. we do a shot, and you know, oh, everyone beautiful. sort of sends us off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that was quite a memorable day. Sheesh, uh, lots of lots of things went on there. Yeah, yeah. Don't <laughs> talk about uh, but, uh, oh, I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. Day, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out, shout yeah. out. I mean, and then Cam, you obviously you were the Hilton guy. Um, how was your experience to Hilton beginning days? For those who don't know, obviously those that hadn't kind of tuned into days gone old. But yeah, how was how was that uh, experience for you? Mm, uh, as a whole, it was incredible. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah I yeah. really loved my time there. Yeah, um, I I think the reason I went there, two reasons. First reason was uh, Sam Crooks, who's my cousin. Yeah, shout out to Sam Crooks. What a legend! Yeah. What a legend! What a legend! <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he uh, he was there, and he always told me, "It's like you must come, you must come to my house. It'll yeah. be cool." Like in terms of Mackenzie House. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, okay, but, you know, expensive, whatever. Yeah, and yeah. then I went there for my interview. I think it was in grade six. Okay. And I went there for the interview. And I went to, I got this guy. His name was Dan Dix. I don't even really remember him. He wasn't our matric. He was the matric before we got there. Oh, okay, okay. And he, I, I think they'd paired him with me because he was like, he was like this wildlife guy. I loved the estate. Yeah. And he was like, we told him, like, I enjoyed it a bit. And he was like, cool. Took me to the wildlife center and there were guys doing falconry there. Yeah. And I was like, damn, this is the school I want to come to. Jeez. And I told my parents and they were a bit like, oh, you know. Yeah, 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 <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, so, yeah, then I had to graft, um, obviously, to get there. Yeah. Um, so, so those two, I think, were the biggest things. But my time there, I loved it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. really, really homesick at yeah. Cordwallis mm. at, uh, for boarding school, mm. just being away from home. And I think you fall into a pattern of routine. Mm. I was thinking back on why I was so homesick and why arriving at Hilton day one yeah I was a bit sad day one but mm. I was fine mm. not like I was at Cordy's mm. and I think it's that routine you 
become so used to being that person mm. that you can't escape that identity of sure. yourself. Yeah. And I think when I arrived at high school, I could just create a new identity and I was like, flip, this is really, really cool. Yeah. So I had, I had a really wonderful time. Um, I got to do some really cool stuff. I got to do falconry at the school, mm. play some good sports. You mm. and I played in a couple of sports yeah, teams yeah, yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty buck. Uh, I had to like <laughs> save him a couple of times. But yeah, anyways. <laughs> yeah, and I mean like, so looking back, what do you think is more on the happier side you fondest memory being there do you think it's 100% the the, uh, the 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 night run or is there any other memory that would you mm. think changed your identity as a whole I don't think it would be the night run I think yeah. my proudest memory would probably be the day b- I became elected as head boy yeah 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 I'd yeah, probably yeah, yeah. be at mo- like proudest maybe not happiest mm. but proudest yeah yeah um and then happiest I don't know hey um probably just Thinking back to all the nights in the door, yeah. maybe grade 11, yeah. I had a sick time grade oh, 11. Grade 11 was dope. Grade yeah. 11 grade was very dope. dope. Yeah, yeah, grade um, 11 was dope. It's kind of awkward for Matt right now, but yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I yeah. didn't have to share with you. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, grade yeah, 11 was crazy, man. That. Yeah, but I mean, you know, with all good things does come bad things, you know what I'm saying? So for you, Matt, what is one of the worst memories you have from high school? Because obviously that was, Jeez. you know. Must must be crazy. Asking huge questions. Yeah, yeah, of course. This is your girlfriend's <laughs> worst nightmare. <laughs> wow. Okay. High school was five years ago. Let me try and remember a worst memory from mm. high school. Corpse, do you have one? Well, Matt, think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do I have one? Whew. Uh, I remember a day where, like, um, there was like this intern t- uh, art teacher that was there, and um, yo, I remember this day so well. My days, uh, and basically, like, there was drawings. Right, we had to draw these leaves. I think it was in grade nine. Yeah, oh, we had to draw these leaves, these right? Leaves. Okay. And uh, basically, like, we were all drawing these leaves, and I, my leaf just wasn't the greatest leaf. Like, it was one of the worst leaves. You're just a bad artist. Yeah. <laughs> so I think Kyle Steenberg was, like, after me, and his leaf was amazing. <laughs> so now now he's handing out all the stuff, and he's, like, saying, oh, well done, you did so well. Hoo-hoo-ha. And obviously now, I think he messes up my mark with Kyle's mark. Okay, so he first tells me, oh my gosh, you did so well, wow, wow, wow. And I was like, oh no, so this is not my drawing. And he goes, oh, okay, this one is yours. Oh, this is absolutely terrible. Who the hell do you think you In are? In front of the class. Yeah, the whole class. Who the hell do you think you are to be producing such work at a school like this? You shouldn't even be able to have a position in this school. This is terrible. And Jesus. imagine I'm this grade nine trying to find my identity as mm. a person and I've just been shot down like that. And I'll never forget that day. What a dick. And yeah, man, that was just, that was, that was, that was, that was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that Yo. was a crazy day. Yeah. Now yeah, that so. you said that, I've actually got two stories. Okay. Tell us, man. Uh, so the first story it doesn't involve a teacher. The second <laughs> one does. Yeah. Okay. Um, first story, I was in grade eight yeah. and in grade eight or any grade, the prefects during lunchtime yeah. or during break walk around the school and they come into each quad. And as soon as you get in, t- as soon as they get into your quad, everyone shouts and you have to stand at attention. Oh, like shit. This. So everyone's <laughs> just like dead, s- dead quiet, dead still in the middle of the quad. Okay, okay. And um, uh, I won't mention his name, but the biggest, baddest prefect that yeah. year, boo, came up to me and he was like, why is there litter by your feet? Because you're supposed to pick up all the litter before they get in. And, y- and there was litter by my foot. And mm. I was just like... I'm sorry, please. You have to say please mm. after every yeah, sentence. Yeah, they have to say so please after every <laughs> sentence. <laughs> after every sentence. Yeah. If regardless yeah. of what it is. Yeah, yeah whatever. Every please. sentence. Hello, please. please. Hello, please. I'm sorry, To people please. older than you. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. Sheesh, okay. Yes. And uh, this <laughs> piece of litter was there and I, I just took the hit. I was like, I'm sorry, please. Uh, da, 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 da. I can't Jeez. remember exactly what oh happened, man. but I got I got sentenced to running. Yeah. And running is where you have to, it's a punishment. Yeah. We have to get, um, you have to stand in front of the prefect study. Yeah. For small break and big break, you have to stand in the sun at attention at their beckoning call. Booth. So if they want something from the tuck shop, it's like, hey, Cornelius, come here. Or, hey, former, because that, that's what they call us. Yeah, they call yeah. us former. <laughs> come here. Go, th- go here. Go there. Jeez. And I was on running for a week because of this stupid piece of plastic in Jeez. front of me. I think was that it yours? That was pretty bleak. It wasn't even mine. Oh, was it yours? but that's yeah. all, always, that's all yeah. it looks like that. Yeah. It always looks uh, like that, man. Yeah. Yeah. And second yeah. story, my, my grade 10 or 11 teacher um english teacher mm. we had to write a, a, a speech mm. about our most difficult you know, something we have to deal with mm. type of thing mm. and i was talking about my my bone missing in my one of my vertebrae missing in my neck oh really now i couldn't play we'll rugby we'll and we'll stuff. get to that we'll, we'll get, get to that, that. Yeah. We'll get to that. <laughs> yeah and um she just afterwards she was like cornelius that was the worst story i've ever heard Jeez. you want everyone to feel sorry for you and i was just like yeah hectic Jeez. i just like completely just Went yeah. back in my shell and 
Yeah, didn't really that's talk much. It's such a weird thing. Like, it's such a masculine really space. You yeah. know, it's, it's teachers it's have such an, a such a um, they hold such power. They hold mm. a lot of power, mm. Mm. and they can really yeah, affect a young mind. Mm. Um, mm. And yeah, yeah. Just a just happen. quick detour. You said you lost one of your vertebrae. Well, I was born without a vertebrae in my neck. Oh, yeah. really? So really? one of these ones. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure which okay, one. Okay, okay. Um, so pretty much, there's a nerve in between each vertebra. Yeah, yeah. And there's obviously no vertebra, so there's two nerves that are just chilling, like this in my neck. And if they touch, then it's a problem. So contact sports out. So I never got to play rugby at school. Oh, shucks. Um, Who bounced you? But anyway, yeah. Shucks, so yeah, crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Now crazy, crazy. Mm. Sure, man. Now appreciate that and. Fuck that teacher, man. No. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you nah, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, as for you, Cam, I mean, you've obviously you obviously had a had a journey at Hilton, um, uh, and you know, obviously becoming head boy was a great thing. But you know, also that with yeah, the higher you go, the harder you fall, I suppose, man. And uh, how yeah. was that experience? Yeah, that was. For tough, those who man. don't know, man. Yeah, yeah, you, no, you, I'll, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll tell us. Um, so yeah, for those who don't know, I was uh, head of uh, school for Hilton College in mm. 2019. Mm -hmm. That was announced in like, I don't know, October, maybe yeah, September. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big, yeah, oh, it's amazing feeling, yeah, you know. Yeah. People people just give you respect for no reason, which yeah. is something I, I enjoyed. Mm. But it's it's a weird concept. Yeah. Like, why are these guys respecting me? I've been, a, yeah, I've been announced as, but yeah, that yeah. was weird. Um, and then, yeah, I spent six months as head boy. Um, and yeah, I enjoyed it. It was not that much work. Like, it was a lot of work, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like varsity work yeah, yeah, or something fair, like fair, that, fair. or like business work yeah, or yeah. something. <laughs> it was like, it was decent um, and had a good time there. And yeah, I felt like top of the world. And then I don't know what day it was. It was sometime in June. Mm. Um, everything, I mean, everyone knew this pot was stirring yeah, there at yeah, school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff was happening. Um, and I got told by one of my mates, um, I won't mention him actually, mm. but uh, one of the guys in our grade came up to me after one of our exams, because we were writing exams that week, okay. mid-June June exams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, hey, just careful. I've heard rumors that they, they're coming for you. So I was yeah. like, okay, geez, that's a bit weird, mm -hmm. but sure. And then I heard like all these stories. Anyway, then they send out a, a thing that they're going to have school assembly or yeah. school assembly or whatever. And on my way, it's me and a couple other guys who were involved. Mm -hmm. um, and involved in what? We, we have got I'm no getting content. there. I'm <laughs> getting there. And then uh, anyway. Yes, yeah, this Netflix um, trailer, man. My <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> got to build people up here. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, so I got taken away and they, uh, basically I ended up getting expelled for smoking weed at school um, or asked to leave, mm. not expelled, but mm. yeah, basically. Um, and yeah, there was a whole load of drama around that. Mm. I'm not going to get into that. That's yeah, not really yeah, important. Yeah. But yeah, that was probably the lowest moment. Eh? You yeah. know, I think that the hardest part was, um, in the meeting with the headmaster, I'm sitting there and I've now, like now it's come out. I've had my, my test mm. and my initial test has come back positive. And I'm in the meeting with the headmaster and he says, um, so there's two options. Either I phone your parents or you phone your parents. Sheesh. And now I'm like, there's no ways after all of this, I'm going to make him phone my parents. Mm. There's no ways. I'm picking up the phone. I'm phoning him. Mm. Yeah. Probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do, sure. you know, was phone your parents and like having my dad answer so excited to chat to me. Mm. And then I'm like, have you, re have you heard the news? Like they hadn't mentioned anything about, but they'd mentioned that a whole bunch of boys had been caught smoking, mm. whatever. Mm. Yeah. And uh, he's like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. He's like, please tell me you're not involved. Mm. And yeah. Sure. Hardest, definitely the hardest moment. Sure. Probably of my, probably of my life. Probably. Jeez, jeez, um, jeez, jeez, just like hardest emotionally, not like physically or like, yeah, just yeah, hardest yeah. to, to comprehend the gravity of what was happening. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, in that moment, like you are basically rock bottom. Yeah. yeah. So definitely and how does, yeah. how does how do you how does one get out of that because you know how did you turn around that situation it's a funny story yeah. and i don't know if i've told this before to many people but the day after it happened so the day okay well the day it happened was a thursday mm. i think it was a thursday and everything all hell broke loose friday morning had a meeting with the parent with my parents and the headmaster and everything happened and they're like hey you gotta go home for the weekend i was still a hilton boy at the mm. stage but they're like you gotta go home this weekend I knew I was done, mm. um, but that was all right. And then the next morning, I woke up to a song. I set my alarm for quite early. I wanted to make sure I was up early, not like sleeping in. And I played, it's called 10 a.m. Sa or Save the World by Me uh, Metro Booming. Mm. And I listened to that song. And I woke up that morning and I, put a s I had a smile on my face. Mm. And I was like, now that I'm at rock bottom, 
there's nowhere lower to go. Yeah, there's that's, nothing that's else nice. I can do. Yeah. I woke up smiling and I was like, I am so ready for this challenge. I'm finally ready to be challenged because I had had a belief since 2017 when I went to an exchange, which I'll talk about later, mm. where I wasn't going to live another sad day in my life. Every day was going to be happy. Mm. And that day I finally got to test whether that was true or not. Sure. Mm. Wow. Yeah, man. Damn, that's deep. Hey, take a moment. <laughs> Yeah, I know that's, that's that's deep, man. I mean, and I mean, look at the trajectory that it's it's now, um, uh, yo, angled your way in. Mm. Losing my words here, even, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I get you, I get you, I get you, I get you, and I think that it's it's incredibly bad. And that's now where the story now comes to you guys now finally meeting. So, mm. how did the love struckness start? <laughs> 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 the beautiful love story, <laughs> because now this is where the story gets interesting. Where we talk about business, and now we mm. talk about mm. how you guys now finally merge together. Because you guys are quite different in age, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. 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 And well, so, uh, yeah, I'm 23. Cam's 20 21. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. I'm older than Cam. Yeah. So <laughs> 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 but anyway, so, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> just fact check that. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so how did you guys meet, and how did that uh, whole situation come come about? Yeah. So Cam actually came to visit at uh, the digs I was staying in in Pretoria. Mm. You know, Tristan McKenzie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and I was yeah. staying with Tristan McKenzie. Okay, and Cam okay. Cam came to visit. Shout Tristan. out to Tristan McKenzie. He Shout was he, Tristan. he was a legend, man. He was yeah. a legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a legend. <laughs> still is. Mm. Still is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Cam came to visit. Uh, we had a good time. Whatever, whatever. Mm, mm, we were just like all chilling, having yeah. a bit of a draw. Yeah. And then uh, next day, I went to go pick up something from Cam's house, or a few days mm. later. Okay. And uh, we just got chatting, spoke to him about his, his business that he just started then, yeah. Ponder. Oh, yeah, Ponder, Ponder. His online tutoring platform. Yes, yes. Um, and then, yeah, I just checked all these business books <laughs> in his house. Yeah. And I was thinking, yes, what is this thing? Yeah. yeah. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. No one else thinks of, no one else knows about these mm -hmm. books. And mm -hmm. I've been, all I've been seeing on my YouTube and whatever is these books mm -hmm. and just learning about business. 100%. And I'd, I'd, I have never really, never really met anyone else who'd been doing the same thing as me. Mm -hmm. And I saw this guy was doing it and I was like, yo. Okay, mm. hold on. Yeah, There's something yeah. Yes. What's this guy doing? <laughs> um, and then yeah, pretty much from there we just uh, started chatting. You know, mm. just throwing mm. around ideas and um, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And then yeah, so everything like that happened, mm. and uh, we weren't really chatting that. Like we spoke a bit every now and again, mm. and then I caught a falcon. Uh, in KZN and I couldn't get permits to take it to Gauteng. Oh yeah, I remember uh, that story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> such a pain. Yeah, anyway, yeah. So I'm in Derby, I'm in KZN at home mm. and I finally get permits but only to the free state. So mm. I can only go to the free state with my bird. Mm. So I'm like sick. There's this really cool spot it's called Freda or the farm is called uh, Bonzamara Cattle Stud or something. Okay. Um, and the place is called um, Little Long Creek. Mm. Yeah, Little, Little Long, Long Creek. Creek. And I'm like flip, okay, I'm keen to go there but I'm not like I'm not too beginning to go by myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, flip, who's someone that I have a sick time with and whatever? And that's when Matt comes in. So yeah, I was not like, corpse. <laughs> ah, <laughs> when Cape Town. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair. But, um, so yeah, then I invited Matt to, to uh, Freda for the first yeah, time. We've yeah. been there twice. Mm, twice. Yeah. I've been there a couple more times yeah. on falconry trips and whatever. Mm. But uh, yeah, and I think that's kind of where it became less so just a friendship and more like a business partnership mm. and more about business than i mean i'd say now we super close friends mm. and business partners yeah, fair, fair, but fair. back then it was just friendship but like no business we'd talk about business mm. but we weren't in business together mm. up until that point oh wow. wow 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 and when did the conversation about escaping the matrix become like a common idea do you, uh, do you know what your do you know do your subscribers know what escaping the matrix is? Oh, they should know, man. <laughs> <laughs> but for those who don't know, I think I think it's only right. You you you're right. But basically, when I talk about escaping the matrix, I'm talking about um, the ideology of. Uh, I think we live in a in an interesting society today where there are a particular amount of people that control what we do and what we don't do. Um, and so my idea of escaping the matrix is the idea to shut those people up. Um, those most powerful people up and yeah just having your own say in this life uh, yeah okay. so uh what do you guys think uh when did you guys have that conversation of escaping the matrix so i think before we start mm. the, I, the way that i'd understood like escaping the matrix mm. i'd understood the, m the matrix as like the corporate nine to five. Oh, so no, i think we had no, no, slightly no, no. different <laughs> ideas there yeah, that's yeah. a much better idea yeah, yeah um yeah. but in terms of like just to quickly touch on like in terms of the nine to five, mm. I think a lot of people get 
hateful maybe not hate but they like feel like people say a nine to five is a terrible thing yeah yeah but for some people it's the perfect thing 100 percent. like some people that is exactly what you should be 100 percent. um not us Mm. not me i don't think you yeah um, (laughs) but yeah and that's something i just want to touch on is Mm -hmm. that like i'm not trying to hate on the nine to five yeah it's just not for me and that's fine some people that's exactly what you should be doing Mm. and that's definitely the path you should be on 100%. but i am on a different we're on a different path yeah and yeah. i think that that's somewhere something that we want because as matt said freedom yeah yeah, 100%, 100%. so i think our first conversations about it probably happened that first time in fred uh, i mm. was actually reading a book by tim ferris it's mm. called the four hour work Week. yes 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 of course amazing book mm. very good book yeah, definitely yeah. recommend yeah, yeah if you haven't read it um and it's also about that escaping the corporate world mm. escaping like being able to do stuff like mm. he won the tango world champs or something having Sheesh. never danced bef- but until six months before that wow. you know oh. doing cool stuff like yeah. that and i think i was reading that book and matt i forgot dude, what, we had a big conversation we were w- supposed to be watching the rugby and we parked our car mm. we drove to where mm. there was signal and we parked our car and while we were sitting there the rugby w- the signal wasn't good so mm. we weren't working we weren't watching the rugby and anyway we started this conversation and matt started talking to me about like biz questions you'd ask like people who are working with you and mm. stuff like that mm. and i think that's probably where it started mm. in terms of this escape the nine to five um join the new rich that's mm. what tim mm. ferris calls it yeah but yeah. Yeah, yeah. So for Matt, then for you, like, where did you kind of also, what is your opinion? How did that fire spark in you about escaping that nine to five? Um, yeah, it's just, as I said earlier, the freedom thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. freedom like thing, you yeah. Can't, you can't be free and work a nine to five. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And um, what is your definition of the matrix again? So basically, yeah, the idea of, I feel like they're these powerful people yes. that kind of are at the top of the yeah, society yeah. in, in, in okay. the world. And then, like, for me, it's just that idea of not giving them the power to tell me to mm. dictate my life. Yeah. Okay, mm. fair enough. Mm. So, yeah, they, the reason why there is a nine to fives is mm. because of those people as mm. well. Mm-hmm. So it's, 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 very, it's a similar sort of concept. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, But I, I read a book by um, Naval Ravikant. It's called The Almanac of Naval Ravikant. It's mm. actually not by him. I can't remember who the author is, but someone's compiled all of his work together. Okay. And that is a great book. Uh, it really like just expands your mind and mm. it's just like, wow, wha- the, the why am I doing what I'm doing? So you said the great mind of? The, the, the almanac, almanac. The of almanac. Naval oh. Ravikant. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So for anyone who wants to. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Have, I haven't even read, read it yet. <laughs> yeah. 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 I need to read it. <laughs> um, and I just thought, like, there's no, like, people, th- people talk about the safe route mm. and getting a job and then, oh, five years down the line, I'll have experience mm. and then I can start that job, mm. right? Mm. Uh, start that business, like go off on my own mm. after after working. Mm. But if if you look at the two different people, the, the one guy s- took a job and now he's, he's going to start his own business. Mm. The one guy started his business from the beginning. Sure. And five years down the line, person A with the job has no idea how to run a business. Jeez. Person B has had five years Yo. of mm. doing his own thing and learning how to run a business and you know it's pretty pretty clear to see he's going to come out on top there mm, mm, um it's, it's very dependent on industry i'm not i'm not as as cam said earlier mm. we, we're all about nine to five mm, like mm, if mm. you if that's for you mm. go for it like mm. we need we need the doctors we need yeah 100 we need the, lawyers, yeah, we need the know, corporate dogs yeah, 100%, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and some people like are seriously fulfilled mm. working a nine to five mm. and that is amazing mm, 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 uh, we don't take anything away from that it's just that we are not keen f- to do that and we don't feel like that's a life that we would want to live so okay so um, then what's your what's your what's your 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 answer then to people that have those limiting beliefs that want to protect the matrix to say no you have to study you have to because you studied right i did yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, what did you study by the way industrial engineering oh you see time. so like you know you'd be in that whole part of no you must go down the engineering yeah route, must go yeah. you know what's what do you think their limiting beliefs are in terms of not understanding your way of i think of people people are just scared to be different bro mm. i think it's it's a core human it's like human nature mm. to to want to be the same yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you if you drive on the highway and it's raining you'll see people looking around to see if their windscreen wipers are going <laughs> the same <laughs> speed as the person next to them oh, fair, am fair, i fair, doing fair. this right you yeah, know but yeah. and that just translates to all aspects of life mm. people are always like that mm. if you just take a minute and you think about that tomorrow the next day just like keep it in the back of your mind mm. like why am i doing this oh it's because this guy did it mm. and it's like oh, he, he, he's done it so it must be the right thing to do sure. and i think people that's how people think right? yeah i think yeah. people like my dad got a job he worked this time and now he's he's fine now yeah, yeah you yeah, know yeah, like yeah. everything turned out all right yeah, yeah so i think it's just um 
just surrounding yourself with people that are different, mm. that aren't thinking in that way, mm. is, is huge. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. And what I about you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sorry, yeah, that's my answer. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. What about you, Cam? What did you think? I think it's a change in the times. Yeah. So I think, yeah, it's it's in terms of people trying to be like play it safe and people trying to, um, like people people especially our, our parents they care about us a lot. Yeah. And people yeah, yeah. who care about us a lot find. I find people who care about a lot are worried about you taking risks mm. and will generally try to protect you in the greatest way possible, yeah. which is human nature. 100%. And that's incredible. Mm. That you can never ask for anything more from mm. your parents. Mm. Um, but I think in terms of the change in times, 50, 100 years ago in the industrial, well, maybe not, I don't know my history, very <laughs> yeah. but in terms of like 50, 100 years ago, especially in South Africa, getting a safe job was the safest mm. route. Mm. Starting a business, Yo, that's it's a dangerous route mm-hmm. to go on, especially in those times. Mm-hmm. You know, access to information limited a lot of people. Mm-hmm. A lot of people couldn't start businesses, opportunities mm-hmm. um, in terms of audience, trying to find customers for your thing. It's mm-hmm. a lot harder back then. So mm-hmm. I think people got ingrained into this nine to five I- security. People mm-hmm. are always searching for that security. Yeah, and yeah. I think people who are stuck in that nine to five are looking for security in mm-hmm. that. Um, mm-hmm. People who are stuck there, not the people who want to be there. Mm. People who are stuck there are looking for the security in that. And I think when people are looking for that security, that's the tough thing in terms of you're comparing yourself to what life was like 50 years ago mm. when all these principles were set in terms yeah. of tr- work starts at eight, finishes at five. You know, all that stuff was set out 50, 100, 200 years ago. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think a lot of it is based on that and it's just this, yeah it's the societal norm and mm. people feel pressured into following that norm sure. and i think the people who don't follow that are the people who are not afraid to be eccentric yeah 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 i think about my own life you know i think about as you speak i think about my own life about how like indeed so my parents have afforded me so much opportunity and you know mr harris once said it to whom much is given much is expected and so i guess for me it's like can i give that much if i go down the same route you know, and surely I have, there has to be some sort of risk that I have to take in order to achieve that that claim. You know, so yeah, you you're definitely right in that. And I like I like also what you said, Matt, about you know this whole idea that 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 limiting belief that you know people tend to have is can be quite stricken and also the people that you surround yourselves with. I think I find myself many of the time surrounding myself with people that don't have that that mindset, and then mm. maybe actually saying, "Oops, maybe I should become a corporate dog." <laughs> 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 but yeah, no, hundred percent. But yeah. I think I think it's it's a, it's a difficult thing, and especially when you're young, you've got to kind of make all these big decisions. Mm. And I mean, for you guys, you know, it's a big decision to kind of go down the route that you guys are going mm. down. So, what is I Bef- suppose? Yeah. Sorry, before we go down that, I want to say, I think that's something that the school system really, really fails at. Yes, they put yes, a yes. lot of emphasis on making huge decisions when you're really young. Yeah. yeah. Like when you're 15, you're choosing subjects. <laughs> that's like 15 choosing theoretically the rest of your life mm. people think that as we were saying earlier people think that once you go down a path that's it for the rest of mm. your life mm. and that fear that comes with that in terms of making the wrong decision mm. that makes a lot of people make the safe decision yeah, yeah, not yeah. the best decision yeah, and yeah. when people make the safe decision sometimes that doesn't end up well so I think the school system fails a lot of us there yeah because okay so Matt you obviously did engineering mm. so you studied the whole degree obviously i suppose you did learn some value mm. why have you not done gone down that route or what, what route of engineering yeah, of engineering yeah um your corpse if you think about it bro if i work as an engineer for yeah. the next 10 years yeah in 10 years time i'm just going to be a good engineer <laughs> you know nothing really special is going to happen mm. um and steve jobs mark zuckerberg they they could have been in great engineers. Mm. Okay, not Steve Jobs. Mark Zuckerberg, <laughs> let's say he's very technical. <laughs> he could have been a great engineer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, you can be a great engineer. That's mm. great. But mm. then what have you actually added to anything? Uh, you, a- you add a lot of value as an engineer, but rather it's just you can't escape that mm. that matrix. Mm. You're just chasing the next, the next pay increase. Um, you can just do a lot more by yourself yeah, with yeah. not being restrained by anything yeah so so you'd rather have like a lot of being a like know little about a lot yeah than so, a so, lot if, about so if i have a really thing. good idea let's say for an example i'm five years into my engineering career okay and i've got this amazing idea that i want to clean solar panels for yeah. example yeah um i'm an engineer i have no business experience like maybe i can approach a company i'm working at uh-huh. saying i've got this idea um but maybe they won't take me mm. on or whatever but if I if I work now, make some money, 
and then I, I've got this passion project. I want to like design a new solar panel cleaning mm-hmm. machine. Mm-hmm. I can go out with my capital that I've got and hire a team of four engineers that are 10 times smarter than me. Sheesh. And that impact that I'll have is 10 mm. times better than mm. me working as a mediocre engineer in a company mm. that's helping them achieve, you know, it's, it's, it's mm. yeah. companies do yeah, good yeah, things, yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, it's, it's, it's often smaller than yeah. what you'd want to actually do. You're, mm-hmm. cre- you're creating value for yourself and not just for other people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, no, I hear that. That's, that's so mm. true. Yeah. That's so true. And that like it extrapolates much bigger than greater than yourself, which is mm. actually great. Sure. Mm. Um, and then, uh, then what is, what's, so the end goal is essentially freedom. We can agree with that, okay. right? Yeah. We can yeah. agree that the end goal is freedom. And can we just, just for once, just dream a bit. Cam, when you're free, what does that look like? Free for me, I actually have like quite a good picture painted in my head. (laughs) So my uncle currently owns my grandpa's farm. Mm. You've been there, hey? I'm sure we went there. Yeah. Ah, I don't know. (laughs) What am I doing in the bushes (laughs) now? (laughs) 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 I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah. Well, uh, Uh, there where we had those uh, Yorkshire puddings. Yes, Uh, the Yorkshire pudding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 (laughs) yeah. My grand's Yorkshire pudding. Um, so yeah, so that I'd like to own that farm one mm. day. And for me, freedom is being able to wake up in the morning mm. at whatever time I want, which for me might be early. Mm. For Matt, I know Matt wakes up <laughs> early. <laughs> I don't wake up as early. Yeah. But it's being able to wake up when you want, have mm. breakfast when you want, work when you want. For me, go fly my birds in the afternoon mm. or the morning or <laughs> whenever I want mm. to. So for me, it's... I'd really love to live on that farm with my cousin Robbie Mm. and other family members if they want to too. Him and I have spoken about it. But it's about being able to make the decisions that you want when you want. Sure. I think that's the biggest thing. Mm. Um, And being able to do the things that really make you happy and think like, damn, I live a cool life. Mm. Um, So oftentimes when my birds up, my falcons up high in the sky and it's about to come down at 200 k's an hour or whatever Mm. and I'm standing there, I'm like, flip, I love what I do. Mm. And I think that's for me, what that goal looks like, what Jeez. that picture looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's deep, man. It's surprising how you didn't say the private jet, the yacht, the <gasps> yeah, none yeah, of that off, off, off brand. Yeah, 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 yeah. None yeah, of yeah. that matters. No, for I love me. that. Love that. Love that. Love. Mm. And uh, Maddie, no, exactly the same, bro. It's mm. just doing what you want when you want to do it, mm, you know, mm, and mm. not having someone tell you, no, you can't do this or you can't do that. Mm, mm, mm. Um, obviously, private jets and yachts and stuff are, are nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, bro. It's just being free. Yeah, just yeah, just yeah. being able to do what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. If I want a yacht, then I want to get a yacht. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I don't no, know. No, no. I hear you. I not hear to, you. Not to, I think yeah. also one of the bigger things is not to have to make sacrifices based on money. Mm. If I want to make, if I want to not buy a yacht because I don't want a yacht, then that's cool. But I don't want to not buy a yacht because I can't afford it. Yeah, fair, fair, Or fair. I don't want to not buy that farm or not go to lunch tomorrow mm. because I have to worry about paying the bills. Yeah. That's, it shouldn't be about money. When money is no longer a limiting factor, that is freedom. Sure. That's deep. That, that is deep. That is deep. That is deep. That is deep, man. <laughs> yeah. Sheesh. <laughs> One of those parts, man, where I'm a bit uh, speechless corpse, man. <laughs> but I mean, okay. So before we actually get into your guys' business ventures and exactly what you guys have done um, and what you guys are currently working on, uh, I wanted to ask for some kind of advice for me, you know, because... Uh, I'm a guy that's uh, in a situation where I don't really know what I want to do, but I also know I don't I know what I don't want to do, but I don't know what I want to do. Um, and I suppose you guys are kind of relatively stable in terms of where you see you know yourselves heading. And I know when I, I kind of want to achieve this freedom through YouTube and through the creator world, but I don't necessarily know how I can do that, especially on the business back end more than the creator back end. So any words of wisdom? Learn a skill. Learn a skill. So I think your biggest thing for you would probably be to find a fundamental business or personal skill mm. that is something that you can get really, really good at. Mm-hmm. And with that thing, you can then monetize your time. Mm. And then, so for you, I think you would be an excellent salesman. Um, sales, people have a lot of negative connotations about sales. Like, yeah. oh, I don't want to be a salesman. Yeah, yeah. But everything is sales. Mm-hmm. Like me telling you that um, a nine to five is bad. I'm selling you on my idea and my belief in that thing. Mm. So selling is really, really important. Mm. So for you, I think if you could learn maybe not sales, maybe not video editing, um, but some fundamental skill that you can then get really good at and use that to maximize your time because everyone works per time basically mm-hmm. so 
let's say you make a thousand rand mm. in 10 hours, you're making a hundred rand an hour. Mm. Um, and depending on wherever that money's coming from, that's your time per unit hour. Mm, mm. And you've got to find ways to increase that as much as possible. Yeah, 100%. So like the really, really rich people, they're just consultants. They help other people with their businesses and they charge like a hundred thousand rand for a three hour session. Sure. And that's like ridiculous. Yeah, but yeah. how do they get there? They learn the skills. Mm. So, sales, uh, copywriting, mm. video editing, mm. stuff like that, that you can then monetize. I think that's your best way of firstly getting out the matrix mm. in terms of monetizing, monetizing your own time and mm. being able to work when you want. Mm. And then from there, learning how to grow the business, mm. I think. Mm. You know, sure. Right? Mm. Yeah. I think you just have to really decide what you want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, have yeah. to know what you want to do yeah, before you scale that's the it. Thing. That's the big, yeah, that's yeah. A big question. Mm. So, you know, YouTube... You can you can do well on mm. YouTube. Mm. You can do well doing podcasts, but you need to you need to come out with some sort of unique value mm. that mm. no one else can get that from someone else. Mm. You know, mm. there's thousands of m- thousands of hundreds, probably hundreds of thousands of people mm. trying to go big on YouTube. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. How can you get those eyeballs on your videos? Mm. Mm. You know, you need to think about like as much as you want to be authentic and yeah. do your own thing. You also have to understand what people want to watch, yeah, yeah, and yeah, try yeah. and merge those two worlds of what you want to do and what people want to see. And that, mm. that that's such an interesting concept you raise, you know, because that also talks to me about business um, passion versus reality, mm. you know, and that like fine line between the two, mm. you know. So like, how do you kind of navigate that? I don't know if my question kind of really yeah, makes no, sense. Okay, yeah. passion versus mm. reality, mm. right? So, so we we've started. A, should we just get into this? Yeah, yeah we, We've started a, a marketing agency. Okay, right? okay, yeah. And I wouldn't necessarily say that. I get out ev- out of my bed every morning and like I'm just so excited yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. do marketing, mm-hmm. you know. But I really love marketing. Mm. I really enjoy it, mm. and it's something that I can see myself doing for you know a good amount of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the marketing agency is something. It's it's a cash cow. It's mm. something that we we plan to make money from. Sure. There's no um, upfront expenses. There's no huge assets we have to we have to buy. Mm. There's no huge investment in the in the in the initial stages. Mm. So. Yeah, just you gotta make you gotta make your money first. Yes. Mm. What did you say earlier about um, passion and business? So, a lot of people get passion and stuff mixed up. So the problem is is that generally, and this is like ninety nine percentile, ninety ninth percentile, is that when people associate money to s- to something that they're doing, yeah. it automatically takes the enjoyment out of it. Sure. Mm. So 100%. following your passion is a misconceived idea for mm. most people because they'll follow that. Let's say you're a, a really, really enthusiastic painter and you mm. love painting in your house. Mm. The moment money gets assigned to certain paintings, you're then looking, oh, I need to paint more of that mm. or I need to paint less of that. Mm. And that association of money takes the enjoyment out of it. Mm. So you've got to find a way that you can get the money first and then use the money on the things that you're passionate about. Mm. So mm. making the money, either way, you're not going to enjoy it all the time. Things mm. are not always enjoyable. Mm. I wake up in the morning making, I'm watching these videos at the moment, trying to learn how to build websites mm. like Matt. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Those videos, they, they're pretty boring. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's not that enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I know that I'm going to be able to use money on the things that I enjoy. And that thing, we had a chat about this in Pretoria. Mm, yeah. I think that that's quite an important thing is that mm. people always think, what am I super passionate about? Oh, I need to do that for money. Mm. But you don't have to. Yeah. You can. I think it's quite a risky thing. 100%. But uh, you can if you want to. 100%. Um, 100%. 100%. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. so right. You're so right. You're so right. The moment money comes into the picture, everything changes. <laughs> mm, <laughs> and that's everything why I kind of like the beginning days of like this YouTube space. Because mm. like I'm literally doing this all out of a passion at a complete loss. Mm. So it's just like everything that I'm doing right now is just out of raw passion. Mm. And I hope that the moment money starts coming in, Nothing changes. Corpse mm. is still the same guy. It's but anyways, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's yeah. going to be going to be one of your. Yeah, that's going to be kind of the, the yeah. make or break. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Mm-hmm. So you guys obviously spoke about the marketing agency. Just to, to kind of just get a bit more understanding for those who don't know, um, how did that come about? And yeah, yeah. So I was twenty twenty. Should we should we talk about Taproot? first yeah let's talk about sorry okay, okay we'll okay. take a step back okay okay, okay, okay. that's yeah. fine that's so fine. when we were at that freda place the first time yes 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 we we're with falcons yeah yes, okay. yeah <laughs> we were flying birds yeah. and whatever and we were sitting there and we're like no it was the second time mm. and we're like flip we want to start a business but like we needed to find something and i don't know how we got into i think you found something on on um e-commerce, is what we e-commerce or something yeah, yeah. like to sell something online yeah 
and we found out these hydroponic plant decorations thing. Mm. Uh, and we started off with that and we spent a couple months, maybe like four or five months trying mm. to do this thing. It's quite a, it's quite an interesting business model, mm. not yeah. very s- scalable, so but we so didn't know at the time. To explain what it is, yeah. Yeah. what Taproot is, yeah. it's these little wooden blocks or wooden mm. pieces of, like pieces of wood. Okay. That uh, you have a glass test tube in or some sort of glass container. Yeah. yeah. And you take a cutting of a, of a, tr- of a plant yeah. that you like and you put it in that water. Yeah. And it looks pretty. It looks good on your desk. Maybe yeah. you can uh, put some images up here on the video. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. 100%. 100%. Um, Taproot is still <laughs> running. <laughs> it's still running, by the way. Yeah. My sister's taking it over. Okay. Um, but it's pretty much, yeah, these, it's, like, it's like a gift mm. type of thing. Mm. Yeah. You know, no, yeah. And it's not hugely scalable. The, mm-hmm. the profit per item is not really worth worth our time like we could work on mm. other things that are have a bigger return on investment 100%, on our 100%, time. yeah yeah um yeah. so we we sort of can we got our first sale which is amazing mm, uh we've got a shopify crazy. app on my phone yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. oh how much was that how much was that i wasn't even doing anything oh so look at that amazing. man look at that that's that must be a yeah. ma- that must be amazing so that, was great. that was an amazing feeling but yeah. um we also did well to to um like reassess and think what mm. are we doing here mm. yeah what is the end goal mm. well how much can we make from this business yeah mm. what's the time per earnings yeah. from this business yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. it just yeah. was not good really. yeah it was not good Sheesh. so I'd in terms of what we wanted yeah. yeah yeah so i'd been um doing a bit of research on youtube looking at different industries to go into yeah and um Something called SMMA, Social Media Marketing Agency, mm. came up, mm. and I found this guy Iman Gadzi. Oh, Iman uh, Gadzi, what a legend! Yeah, what a legend! Yeah, of course, I know Iman oh. Gadzi, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's a bit polity, that guy. Gets, yeah, gets he gets some politicky involved, vibes, man. Yeah, recently, yeah. especially. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's yeah. also on the Escaping the Matrix vibe. Yes, and comes to Cape Town, enjoys his money. Yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, yeah. Mm. Actually, uh, a friend of Iman's, Pete, who we went to Court Wallace. Actually, he went to Court. Um, he at somehow found out about but that he was doing this marketing agency yeah, yeah yeah yeah. i was thinking i wouldn't normally just buy a course online from someone random yeah. but because i'd known that peter done it and mm. he was doing well it mm. kind of made me a bit more comfortable yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to spend this money on a course i just actually started a jacket company sure. in pretoria where i was selling like secondhand branded jackets mm. as like a thrift type of vibe mm-hmm. and i'd made some money and i was like okay let's buy this course yeah um and it was like a lot of the money from sure. that went into the course. How much? How much was the course, by the way? Um, I think it was like twenty something. Grand. Okay, okay. So it's not um, cheap, man. Eh? So it's like a thousand dollars at the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. But okay. I think the course now is one thousand five hundred dollars. Okay. Sheesh. I'd recommend it to anyone yeah, yeah. looking Sheesh. to get in, into the space. Mm. Um, and then yeah, we just we I did that course and eventually sort of got Cam involved. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Started converting him yeah, for some took reason. A while. He, wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't keen in the beginning. Why, why weren't you keen, by the way, in the beginning? Because I was still very much on that like passion thing, mm. you know, in terms of like I don't want to be doing something that I'm I'm not like, like I, I'm not a tech person. Yeah. I'm not a biz like okay, I'm a business person. I'm not yeah. a tech person. I'm not like a marketing person. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. the preconceived idea of what I thought a marketing person was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it took me a while of chatting to Matt and understanding the industry a bit better before yeah. I was really like, oh, okay, I could actually see myself doing this. Yeah, yeah. And looking back, like even a month before I just, des- well, I decided to like hop on with Matt, mm-hmm. basically. I was like, this, mm, not really, you know, not mm-hmm. really my thing. But, you know, even now I'm like, flip, I really enjoy this stuff. And sure. it's interesting. It's mm. some of the stuff is mind blowing. Yeah, the stuff yeah, that you're yeah. learning. So, like, I'm so glad that I did. Yeah. But that was probably mm. the limiting thing at the time. Oh, wow. Okay, okay, mm. okay, okay, okay. Now, it's beautiful to know that the, the, the business benches have come together. And so now it's the marketing business. It's the leather, leather jacket business. Okay, right. the jackets is the done. The jackets are done, yeah. okay. Done. Uh, but but can't, you have obviously Ponda, you know. Mm. So how did Ponda yeah. come about and how is that going? So Ponda was my first like official business. Yeah. So I'd started some in school. I don't know if you remember, I used to sell cool drinks with crooks in McKenzie. Yeah, 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 yeah. I used to sell yeah, cool yeah. drinks and I sold uh, toasted sandwiches yeah, with yeah. Matt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, different Matt. Um, <laughs> but then, yeah, so I think... Shout out to that, Matt. Uh, Ponda came about was co- basically because of COVID. Like mm. without COVID, it wouldn't have happened. Yeah. I was stuck at home um, for like six weeks by myself mm. and I don't know, I think I remember I said to my mom, I was like, mom, I, I want to go. Like, mm why can't they tell me not to go somewhere? Mm. And she was like, no, you're not allowed to. I was like, why not? And I think she said something along the lines of when it's your own money, you can take the risk. And I was like, okay, I just got to make my own money then. Mm. 
So then I thought like oh, right. business <laughs> ideas, business ideas. And that took me a long time. Mm. Um, and eventually I came up with this idea of this like online e-learning type platform. Mm. Um, and that's been a long journey, mm. long journey. Um, it's been very tough, mm. very rewarding and like in terms of the stuff I've learned, mm. but it's been a very tough in terms of like business profitability. Mm. Um, mm. It's taken a lot of money in over a long period of time. Um, so it's something that I'm sort of, I'm putting, still putting focus on there at the moment, but yeah. depending on how this business goes, will depend the will decide the future of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, yeah, that's been that was like the trigger, the trigger point, yeah. which made me realize that I had to learn a bit more about business, mm. and that sort of set me on the path. But then the fund, the biggest change was uh, a friend of mine, Devin McCarty. He gave me Rich Dad Poor Dad by mm. Robert Kiyosaki oh, to read. Just finished it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. what a legend. Yeah, yeah. what a book. What a book eh? dude. And I read like up to thirty pages in. And then I, I didn't read anymore for like three months. And eventually the one day I'm sitting in a parking lot and the book was in my cubby hole. I'm like, I mean, I'm waiting here for 30 minutes anyway. I take out the book and I start reading. And I read like maybe five, 10 more pages. And I was like, ah, this is actually quite interesting. This might help me. And I read that. And I think that was the biggest fundamental change in terms of wanting to like, re I think money is scary for a lot of people. Mm. And it's like, what to do? Where do I go? What, mm. like, how does this thing work? Tabby you know, topic, so a lot yeah. of people <laughs> will just stay away from <laughs> exactly, it instead yeah. of talking about people mm. need to talk more about it. Mm. I think that book made me realize that there's actually a science behind it. Mm. It's actually something you can learn. It's not luck. And when it's something you can learn, that's when I realized, ah, okay, I can do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I hear you, man. And I mean, both of you guys are obviously very well researched and, you know, learning about these business ideas and kind of how business works. And how do you guys define in your own way matt the kind of the best characteristics one can have in order to kind of build um well in their journey to build a person yeah, yeah yeah i think you're just you have to never stop yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to be very determined mm -hmm. you have to be committed um i say that but you also have to be very you have to like check yourself mm -hmm. if you know what i'm saying yeah yeah, yeah. You, have, you have to commit to something but then you also have to have some maybe someone looking over your shoulder yeah. and telling you Listen, I know you committed. You you committed to com to committing, mm, mm, but what are you doing here? Mm. Like, is this worth your time? Mm. Is it worth you going through with it? Mm. And yeah, going back to your question, I think you just have to be really uh, be just a committed, disciplined person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because it's not, not afraid to take risks. Yeah, and it's not like you'll be seeing a huge return on investment tomorrow. You know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah, patient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. patient. Yeah. Patient Thank is you. very big one. Patient, eh? mm. self-disciplined, and and committed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. for you, Cam, like obviously you spoke about you know the the money invested into um, Ponder. And I suppose the time and effort and, you know, both of you now are going on to this new venture. But what's been kind of the lowest moment kind of in this business venture yeah. and, you know, trying to, to chat about what Matt was saying? Yeah. I think the biggest characteristic between in life, someone who's successful and someone who's not successful yeah, yeah, yeah. is a growth mindset. Fair. So fair. I think actually Mr. Green, <laughs> my science teacher, yeah, yeah, yeah. he recommended the book to me, Mindset by Carol Dweck. Mm. And that book, phenomenal. Definitely recommend people sure. would read that one. Crazy. Um, and yeah, I think that's probably the biggest determining factor between someone who's successful and someone who's not. Mm, mm, mm. But lowest point, pff, yo, hey, um, and mm. for ponder, yeah, I even think even even just business in general. I think I business in general, some of the lowest points are like uh, people don't realize how long it takes. Yeah. So mm. some people do get rich overnight and cool good on them <laughs> that hasn't happened to me yet yeah <laughs> but you have to put in a lot of time for a, a weirdly long amount of time mm. so you have to put in a lot of effort mm. over an extended amount of time to become good enough at something for people who want to pay you for that thing mm. um mm. and i think i didn't think it would take this long mm. i thought it would take like five months mm. maybe i thought five six months and i'm like oh man like that's the stretch of it and for the agency it's been a year for ponda it's been like two years um, and realizing that, and that suddenly dawning on me, that's quite a low point. Yeah, it's yeah. like, yo, I really thought by now, yeah, I would be at least be able to, like, you know, be paving my own way, hundred percent, paying for my rent and living yeah. in a place. But I think that's one of the hardest things to get over is mm -hmm. that you all excited for the first couple months, and then you go through this like gray patch, mm. and then you slowly start to see light at the end of the tunnel. Sure, and you get there. Crazy man. Yeah, it's, it's it's funny. I suppose it's the same for me with YouTube. You know, because mm. YouTube is. Some people that are famous influencers, you know, just open up the YouTube channel and provide a uh, reason to watch it on the Instagram. 
and then you've got oh, so yeah. many thousands of subscribers in like a, an instant. Whereas us, where we're basically kind of nobodies, mm. we have to start and give people a reason to watch. Who's going to watch my vlog if they don't know who I am? You know what I'm exactly. saying? So you've got to build that. And yeah, every single day is that 1% improvement. And for you, Matt, was there any kind of low moment that you experienced during this business? Mm, yeah, kind of I think... Um, turning point? Yeah, mm. I think I definitely at one stage took on a lot more than I can handle. Mm. So I was... Two months ago, I was finishing up my dissertation yeah, yeah, yeah. for final year. Um, and I was also working an internship at a, at a solar company here in Cape Town. Yeah. And I was trying to run this business at the same time. <laughs> so it was just not a good time. Mm, like mm, there were so many things going on mm. and you I've realized that you can't, you have to focus on one yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%, 100%. Um, so that was quite a low moment. Mm. I was like, okay, wow, we put in all this work. Mm. Why am I not seeing any results? Yeah, 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 yeah. But you just have to be patient mm. and we finally seen some results mm, now. Mm, so mm. that's just like, it keeps us going. Sure, you know? man. That, that's beautiful. And yeah. what's the end goal in terms of like the success of this business? With where do you guys see it going five, ten years from now? Sitting on a beach in <laughs> Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think being in a position, I think the end goal for the business for this business, yeah. um, for the agency, will be a position where we are not fulfilling the services, mm. we are not uh, out, uh, sourcing leads or sourcing clients, so yeah. we're not finding clients and we're not servicing the clients. Mm. We are just representatives of the company and put forward systems to make the company grow and yeah, mm -hmm. I think that would be the end goal for this business, but mm. this is just a stepping stone for other businesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Around. Are we not going to get into that? Or are you guys going to give me a we bit of a We won't give away too many details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, we've got some business guys watching yeah. us. <laughs> a couple of competitors. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I guess, yeah, Powerbox is just, the goal, the end goal for the business is for it to be like a ship sailing in the sea by itself. Mm. Mm, autopilot. Mm, mm, yeah, mm. that's the goal. Yeah. As close as we can get to autopilot. Yeah. Um, but not forgetting that it's our business. And 100%. We need to like, take yeah. responsibility yeah. and get involved. No, 100%. 100%. Yeah. And for somebody that um, would like to get into the business space one day, um, is thinking of becoming an entrepreneur, um, any advice for them kind of starting out? Um, for me, I mm. would say, uh, if, if anyone's looking to start a business, um, w first of all, why are you waiting? Yeah, yeah. Start, start now. <laughs> it's yeah. yesterday and to be fair. <laughs> if you have an idea, then what are you waiting for? Yeah, 100%. You know? yeah. Um, and if you've got an idea, go out and get five customers. That's all you have to do. Just go and get five customers who will pay you for whatever service or whatever product you're providing. Mm. Right? If you can do that, then in my opinion, you, you're on your way to having your first business. Sure. But don't build a whole business and then go and look for customers and find out no one wants what you make. Yeah. No one wants what yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's about that. I, I, I call it the step. Step two to 99 paradox. You know, some people are so obsessed with step two to 99, but they can't even do step one. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, exactly it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Got anything else? Carry on. I think for someone starting out, I think the most important thing is to do it. Mm. Is that you're not going <laughs> to... Theoretically, learning is not learning. Yeah. 100%. So like, that's the problem with school is a lot of the subjects you're learning, all these big concepts and all this stuff, and you have to parrot learn it. Da -da 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 -da. None of that stuff matters. Like yeah. you're not going to remember any of that stuff. It's very, yeah, it doesn't yeah. really matter. I, I still don't remember yeah. where my X chromosomes are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so I think going out and doing it and taking that leap of faith into the abyss like that first business whatever it is that's it's such a powerful thing because now all of a sudden for let's say for me for ponder i'm mm. like ah oh, okay now i have to learn a bit about how to do websites online that's sure. crazy for me yeah. where do i start ah uh, and it's things because now you've started the business you have to do them mm. it's no longer ah i could do them mm. it's something that you have to do mm. and something like starting something no matter how small it is whatever you have to learn things mm -hmm. and learning we, the more you learn there's we all have a finite amount of time 100%. the thing that separates us from bill gates and all those guys is they just know more than us mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. uh, they might have had different opportunities mm -hmm. but the general just is that they know more sure. and the best way to learn is by baptism of fire into yeah. the action Mm. figure it out you'll, no, you'll have to figure it out yeah. 100%. Yeah. but you talk about learning you talk about I suppose the thing about learning is that there has to be some sort of progress that one establishes through that and I think for you my question then is if you were guaranteed that this whole business venture and all your businesses were guaranteed to fail would you still pursue it what do you define fail 
Ah, you see now. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'll uh, never make any money of any business. You yeah, you won't, you won't make any money of any business, but you can still go through those learning processes that you're able to go through. I'd go, I'd go live in the bush. Right? <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I would, I wouldn't, um, because yeah. then there's no freedom attached to it. Yes, so fair, there's fair, no fair, like fair, end fair. goal. Yeah. So the, then the second best thing for freedom for me would be to go live on a farm, mm. buy like spend all my money, raise money, buy a farm, and live off the grid, yeah. away from everyone. That would be that's my second thing of freedom. But then you okay. can't go. You're not free. You're not. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. not really free if because you, go back you can't to the travel. Corporate dog. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> even in there, you're not really free because yeah. you can't travel to Greece the next day. You can't <laughs> travel here. You can't do any of that mm, stuff. Mm, mm, mm. So I think if they were guaranteed to fail, I'd still be interested in the stuff, but I wouldn't be as motivated, and mm. I'd look for my second source of freedom. I mm, guess. Mm, 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 mm. Sure. And yourself, man. Yeah, I agree, bro. Yeah. I think if you told me that from the from now until the day I die, every business that I went into failed, mm. um, I'd probably have to, have to rethink it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, uh, not to say that they will. I'll definitely no, see yeah, you guys no, of again course, of course. You know, in, you? in Bantry Bay. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. For me? Yeah, um, if, if, if you were never going to get more than... 10,000 listeners on this podcast. Yeah, and you know, yeah. that's that's a great question. I think more people need to ask themselves why they do things, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that question. And I think for me, I would 100% do this because for me, this is just zen. You know, I'm learning from people that mm -hmm. are better than me in specific spaces and I'm just being able to just listen to the perspectives and just understand. And I do this because I want to share the conversation with um, somebody that is similar to me in terms of just wanting to learn from other people. And, you know, if it doesn't grow bigger than what I want it to grow, that's okay. Because I think for me, this is not necessarily the main goal, but it is something for me that just gives me fulfillness and yeah, just uh, enlightens and me a bit. If, if you could, sitting from where you are and listening to what we've had to say, if yeah. you could give us business advice, what would you give us? Sure. That's a, that's a good one. Oh, uh, man. I'm not really a businessman. But it doesn't uh, matter. That's <laughs> so you can learn something from everyone. Yeah, that's true. Um, sure. I think uh, the best life lessons are definitely self-taught. Mm. Um, I think definitely the idea of experience is definitely one that you should, should um, hold dear to your heart. And I think... Um, I mean, I remember reading a book about leadership before I became head of house. And that was the worst book I ever read because it had no applicability to what I was doing in, mm. in reality. What uh, was the book? Oh, I forgot the name of the book. Some <laughs> book that my dad gave me. I okay. actually hated that book. Yeah. And <laughs> essentially, like, yeah, I just think for me, I think value, um, practical advice. Sorry, I suppose life experience more than theoretical mm. like e experience, mm. you know? Like, I feel like there's so much more power in somebody that's experienced something than that has just read the read textbooks, so you know? So, because I, I actually recently met this um, guy, this Uber guy. Shout out to this guy. What a legend. So, he was a guy. He was an Uber guy. He basically is a white old man. He had this huge chicken business. Um, kind of in the early 2000s and it was a family business and they were like tackling rainbow chicken like everywhere, they were everywhere and essentially there was a family business and so obviously fights and everything and it all went down and he lost everything and he said to me that essentially I'm so experienced but I don't know anyone, you know and uh, the reality is, is that I was so naive to the fact that it's going to be successful and all that but also just because I have life experience and all that but networking is also a very important thing so, yeah, I think networking and also under just putting a, a higher emphasis on life experience, so rather doing it mm. than thinking mm. about, like, you know, so what does the book say? Yeah. Do, you think, do you think if you read that book now, it would, have, it would be better? Yeah, I think because maybe I'd understand it more given that, because mm. I think maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe, that, maybe it's that, you know, because I think also we're very naive. Like me as a business person, like somebody that's not in business as intensely as you guys are, I'd be like, oh my gosh, it must be so easy to make money. Who are you? Like you guys just market to that person and they'll, they'll do it. But I think those people that have actually been in the trenches mm. understand the, the dynamic a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the biggest fundamental things, we chat about this a lot, mm. is that a lot of people fundamentally believe that you can learn more by like reading yeah so, like some 100%. people will read and I, i've fallen to this too like, yeah. earlier in the mm. year i was reading a book a week yeah yeah, like, yeah, yeah i yeah, read yeah, yeah. 16 20 books Sheesh. week after week Sheesh. and you come out of that and you're like yeah i learned a lot and i make notes so mm. i learned maybe more than most people from those books yeah. but how do i apply those yeah, Whereas yeah, yeah. 
you kind of got to go through the trenches first 100%. and then read the book and be like, ah, I should have used this there. Yeah. And you can apply it to your previous experiences. Mm, mm, mm. And I think yeah. And I think it's even with like relationships. Mm. You'll never truly listen to somebody until you go through it yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyways, 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 anyways. But yeah, I mean, just to end off, I love to ask my guests this last deep question because the podcast actually went way longer than expected. But uh, I love to ask them this last deep question, which is um, if, you were, if you were to pass away, on the day that your siblings, oh, sorry, not siblings, but children rather, <laughs> were born, um, and you had to only leave them one note, um, what would you write on that note? Be who you are. Mm. Jokes. Uh, maybe. <laughs> That's a good message, but yeah. it's a bit short. Yeah, I, like, I like that message. How, how long can it be? Uh, however long you want it to be, man. There's nothing to I'd write a long... Okay, fine. A small little sentence then. Ah, this guy. <laughs> I'd say... Choose to do the things that make you feel excited and alive. Mm, 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 mm. Sean. Try your best to do, to do, to do the things that make you happy. Mm. Yeah. Say. Try your best to make and you things. Yeah, to do you the things that make you happy. Mm. Yeah. You can't always do it, but mm. if you're doing it the majority of the time, it's better than doing it the minority of the time. Fair, 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 fair. Yeah. Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say thank you so much for mm. Matt and Cam for coming on to the podcast. Um, I hope that uh, when we come and visit you, they don't tap me down too much at the gate. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, it's really is a privilege having you on. And for those obviously who are interested in some of Matt's and Cam's businesses, I'll definitely be sure to link them down below. Um, uh, where can people find you? Are you guys uh, social media, Instagram? You can find us on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, oh, of course, of yeah, course. Okay, yeah. I'll tag that also <laughs> in the description <laughs> below, ladies and gentlemen. Thank oh you so yeah. much for being on your girlfriend's worst night, man. As always, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. We out of here. Peace.